Welcome to Officio's Transforming Public Procurement Microcast. Today we're going to discuss the implications on the healthcare sector. And I'm lucky to be with Mel Leonard, a leader from our healthcare commercial community of practice. Okay, so Mel, uh, procurement reform in the NHS. Can you tell me what clients tell you that they want from procurement as a priority? Hi everyone, and thanks for having me on today's microcast, Andy. So when I think about public health healthcare procurement, there are three main areas that commercial teams are focusing on. Firstly, it's around ensuring value for money is achieved. So health is one of the largest areas of government spending, and there's a lot of focus on how you deliver value for money within the current economic climate. Commercial teams are key to unlocking those opportunities and to driving value through third party spend. Secondly, it's about ensuring efficient and effective processes. So how do we use systems and digitization to support the commercial process, manage compliance, contract management, and effectively manage supply chain risks and improve resilience? And lastly, how can commercial teams support the system in achieving better patient outcomes and better services? So procuring the right healthcare technologies and devices that can provide long-term value and reduce readmission. Thanks, Mel. Now, can you tell me how will the changes that are coming down the track, what they'll do to impact the regulatory environment? So there's a couple of key changes that have actually happened in healthcare from a regulatory standpoint. Firstly, the provider selection regime, which came into effect in January 2024. So the provider selection re regime, or PSR for short, was introduced as part of the Health Act 2022. And it's a set of rules that was designed specifically for procuring health services in England. So the aim of PSR is to ensure decision making considers the best interests of patients and service users. So it allows for more flexibility and integration in terms of care across the system. It's important to note that PSR only applies to the procurement of health services and is not applicable to goods and non-health related services. The second area to touch on is the Procurement Act, which whilst it's not in effect yet, the Procurement Act will apply to the procurement of all goods and services, including those which are outside the scope of PSR. And the Procurement Act, unlike PSR, is a change in UK law, so it apply across all four nations. Okay. So what opportunities do you foresee that the Procurement Act will facilitate for the rest of the sector? So I think there's definitely a couple of kind of key areas that PSR and the Procurement Act will support for, for commercial teams across healthcare and help them in achieving their key priorities. Firstly, it's around supporting the collaboration across integrated care systems. So health as a sector often encounters quite fragmented commercial processes. So with multiple NHS trusts often sourcing similar products, but at different prices and through different routes. Both regulatory changes look to encourage greater collaboration across health systems and ensure more flexibility in the process. This should support organisations when it comes to purchasing common goods and services, aggregating demand and actually being able to negotiate better prices and better value. The second area is around how the Act supports the move towards value based procurement. So considering long-term outcomes rather than just immediate cost, the focus and shift from meat, so most economically advantageous tender, to mat, so most advantageous tender, allows for much broader consideration beyond just the lowest price. So thinking about things like quality, sustainability, and innovation. This aligns with NHS's ongoing shift towards value-based healthcare services. And it supports considering the impact around patient pathways and ensuring better quality of care in the long run. Linked to this is the focus on innovation within healthcare. So think about how we can get more from kind of goods and services. So the introduction of more flexibility at the way in the way that commercial teams can engage with the market means that health systems can work closer with suppliers, explore new innovations, work closer with SMEs to accelerate better patient outcomes and improve quality of care. I think it's a really exciting time for commercial teams across the health sector as they prepare for the upcoming changes. Thanks, Mel. I completely agree. I think it really is an exciting time. It feels like the change from me to Matt is perfectly suited to the NHS. So I hope you all enjoyed today's microcast. As always, please please share and please discuss the changes to the uh, to the act with your with your network and with your colleagues. And of course, if you if there's any part of the uh, part of the act that you'd like us to cover in a future cast, then please let us uh, please let us know about that as well. Thanks, everyone.